So, tell me exactly about that aesthetic. English Canada, Quebec, Francophone, Anglophone. There is I knew you'd get different, there. Well, we have to, because, <laughs> because you work in both worlds. You work in French, you work in English. And, you know, we're not the two solitudes because we do each other's plays, but there is such a kind of palette difference between us. It helps us to understand each other a bit more. Well, Plus, I love Quebec theatre. <laughs> it, it has a kind of a frisson that I, I don't get much in English Canada. And I go, well, how could we get some of that taste? So what is that? You've got the Anglo designer and the fr Francophone designer. Well, people have been trying to analyze this for a long time, I suppose, you know. Uh, and, I mean, it's been sliced and diced and uh, analyzed and uh, deconstructed. And Michael Egan's and, uh, slicing and dicing? Because you work with both. So. Well, you know, more than any work I had have done with francophones, my time at the theater school working there, I worked there for like 10, 11 years uh, on a pretty steady basis. Uh, enlightened me more about this business of the two solitudes, especially in, in art and in the theater, than any, other, any plays I did. And as I said, you can slice and dice, but like, what used to interest me first, one of the things right off the top was what a francophone kid's notion of classical would be. Now, when you mentioned to a francophone cl the classical theater, or what is classical, they always thought instantly of uh, sort of uh, uh, Marivaux, uh, not Marivaux, Moliere, they would think of first. Uh, and they would think of the, the French 17th century as a, a period of classical writing, which produced the great plays of Moliere. And then they'll extrapolate into the 18th century writers like Marivaux and the mm -hmm. rest of them. So that, that was in a particular uh, historical uh, con continuum. If you ask an Anglophone kid what classical would be, they immediately would think of the English 16th century and Shakespeare, of course, and uh, perhaps some uh, Webster or whatever, you know, in that plays Jacob the Jacobean theater. So you had two two kind of, not divergent, but different notions of what classical was. And then, to, to go on from that, I mean, not to make too, put too fine a point on that, that's easily enough resolved, uh, but some of the difference, uh, in, certainly in the way scenographers work in French and English, has to do with the repertoire of Anglo plays and plays in French. Now, by that I mean, uh, I mean, I'm thinking more of the kind of writing that was done, for example, in the 20th century about uh, for the theater. I'm thinking that in English we had a period. Remember the 70s, the sort of late 60s, all through the 70s into the 80s. We had great writers in English, Canada, like David French, for example, right. wrote a number of. Uh, great plays, and he was like uh, uh, one of the principal writers in 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 an area of theater. I would think of and maybe call uh, the new Canadian naturalism mm -hmm. in a sense. Certainly, any plays that he wrote about the Mercer family, uh, you know, that uh, suite of plays uh, had by the by the way they see they had to be placed in very specific. Um, background, uh, right. decor, you know what I mean? To such an extent that, uh, remember Jacob's Wake, I even went to Newfoundland with Bill, Bill uh, Davis, Davis to, to look at, the, you know, the, the house and la la la, all that. Um, but we, and we also call that period the kitchen sink time, where you had to have the kitchen sink. The decor was so specific, you had to see the Mercer house with the stairs upstairs to the bedroom. Yes. Because that's the way David wrote it. And the cooking and the mother attached to the kitchen. Well, but are you saying Francophone, uh, Francophone Canada did not have that kind of... Well, there, there wasn't that... It, there was never that... seemed in the place that I know, anyway, never have the, quite that uh, requirement that it be so specific. I remember one play, uh, 
There was Michael Cook, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it seems like they're all Newfoundland writers I'm going to talk about, but they're not especially. But I remember he wrote one called Head, Guts, and Soundbone Dance, it was mm -hmm. called. A very, a very lovely play, and, 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 it, and it's, it's quite poetic in its own way. But there was a scene where you had to cook this codfish that was caught. We had to go to Walman's Fish Market every two days to get a new cod, a big old cod like this. And it was cooked on the stage. And the length of time that it poached had to do with the scene and la, la, la. You know what I mean? It was like horrendous. But whereas, whereas Michel Tremblay also writes those kind of plays, but the, the scene required by the playwright doesn't seem to require fish to be cooked and poached at a certain time. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I mean, you, there are also plays of, I mean, before we finish with poor David French, but I mean, there are plays of his that aren't like that at all. For, right. it, I'll give you another example of a Newfoundland play, Saltwater but, Moon. It's a play right. that doesn't. Re I but mean, you're it's saying much that underneath poetic. the the French, the francophone anglophone difference is, the anglophones got more attached to certain specifics of kitchens and sinks and poaching and cooking, whereas the francophones were freer and weren't so nailed down in that. Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, yeah, and cooking and poaching and, and and the house and the details and stuff as it r pertains to to the play and the characters and uh, what the thing is about.